Many solos and chord progressions are built around the Mixolydian mode, whether intentionally or not. The aim of this lesson is to train your ear to both the harmonic and melodic qualities of Mixolydian, so you'll know how and when to use it. Mixolydian is the fifth mode of its parent major scale. This means the Mixolydian sequence or pattern can be seen as starting on the fifth degree or note of the major scale. If we were playing G Mixolydian, for example, G being its first note, we'd actually be playing the C major sequence starting from its fifth note of G. The five becomes one, and the sequence continues from there. So why don't we just say we're playing the major scale? Why learn the mode separately at all? Well, many musicians prefer to see it like this. G mixolydian, purely in terms of its seven notes, is the same as C major. But what makes music modal is the creation of a center of musical gravity around that mode's one note or chord. In other words, playing C major over a backing note of G will create a G mixolydian center because the ear is now hearing that G note as home, recontextualizing the C major sequence. <laughs> When we play from that fifth degree of the major scale, we create a unique sequence of intervals that we call Mixolydian, a unique scale in its own right. Mixolydian is characterized by its minor seventh built on a major triad. This gives us our Mixolydian tonic or one chord, a dominant seventh chord. For example, G Mixolydian could be played over G7. This means Mixolydian will sound most natural over dominant seventh chords. It's no coincidence then that many musicians refer to Mixolydian as the dominant scale. So in your major key blues solo, for example, where all chords are dominant seventh chords, you could theoretically play Mixolydian on each of those chords. Connecting chords to their related scales like this is a good way of keeping your solo sounding natural and melodic. On the fretboard, we can see Mixolydian's intervals formed in this box pattern and this three notes per string pattern. Notice how the only difference between Mixolydian and the major scale is the seventh is flattened by one semitone in Mixolydian. However, some players, especially jazz musicians, like to leave the major seventh in as a passing tone. This has been named the bebop dominant scale. As mentioned before, Mixolydian will work quite naturally over any instance of a dominant seventh chord. For example, take this movement between A7 and C7. We could play A Mixolydian over A7 and C Mixolydian over C7, simply shifting our Mixolydian pattern from an A root to a C root. On the lesson page, you can explore Mixolydian as a musical scale by playing over the dominant seventh backing tracks provided. Mixolydian also works over harmonic sequences, such as chord progressions, that are built around its interval sequence. For example, take a listen to this Mixolydian sequence using triads. The challenge for you is to be able to recognize when Mixolydian is the predominant harmony being used in the music. 
The easiest way to develop this skill is to listen to chord movements that imply mixolydian as the harmonic center. Perhaps the most obvious clue of music being in the mixolydian mode is the movement from its one chord down one whole step to another major chord. For example, in G mixolydian, a common movement would be from G major down to F major and back again. This works because there's a whole step from the 1 down to the 7 in Mixolydian, and if we harmonize the scale on that 7th degree, we get a major chord. Two major chords one whole step apart is a strong clue of Mixolydian, the higher of the two chords being Mixolydian's root chord, and therefore the root around which you would play the scale. There's ear training audio, including links to popular songs that use this movement on the lesson page. Another common mixolydian movement is between its 1 and 5 chords, its 5 chord being a minor chord. In G mixolydian, the sequence would be G major or G7 to D minor. Again, you'll hear this movement used a lot in music. We can move from F major to G mixolydian's 4 chord, C major. The most well-known application of this is in the song Sweet Home Alabama, although they play that in D mixolydian, meaning the chords are D major, C major and G major. Notice how all these progressions resolve around the mixolydian 1 chord. There's a feeling of returning home when you finish on that mixolydian chord. That's primarily what makes a harmonic sequence modal. I wouldn't advise you purposefully write songs in a mode, as this would be creatively quite limiting. But being able to recognise when modal movements are being used, and they are used a lot, will prove hugely beneficial in developing your improvisation skills. When you hear that mixolydian sound dominate the music, you'll have a better idea where to put your fingers to play along. But if you like the natural chord sequences that come out of mixolydian, then by all means use them in your songwriting. It makes a nice change to those standard major key progressions based around Ionian. You can find more Mixolydian progression examples and ear training audio on the lesson page. Cheers. Mm-hmm.